Doing to the bear? Oh, just standing. Oh. How's your How's your feeling? Enjoying? <laughs> oh, yeah, hurt. Did it? Is this yours? Nope. That is. Looks like somebody would be watching. Sorry. Hey, how'd you do on your test? I don't know. I asked, and they said they didn't know. You didn't do too well. Why not? Some of the questions you came up deceptive. Which ones? Um, Someone's Chris did? Yeah. Brian, I think you're better than that. Okay? This is such a big deal, man. It's not worth it. Okay? Let's get to the bottom here. Alright? Alright, go ahead. Tell me the truth. I don't know anything. There's more truth than that other than what's in the newspapers. Okay. And what exactly is in the newspapers? That three kids were killed. They were beat and had their hands and feet bound, and they were castrated. Mm -hmm. That's all I know about it. And I wanted to come to California. Okay, why? Why I want to come out here? I'm looking for apartments. I'm looking now. I'm looking for houses, and I'm supposed to go register for school. And I'm supposed to drive a friend of mine's car back to Atlanta. Okay. Brian, the newspapers didn't tell you about their hands and their feet being bound. Okay? That's what I heard was in the newspaper. It's not in the newspapers, bud. Alright, so that's not in the newspapers. That's what I heard. Where'd you hear it from? I have no clue. You have to have a clue, Brian. It's important. Friends. Who? I don't know. I don't remember things like that. How Those did you know you would be the exact same questions as Chris? Huh? How did you know you would... I didn't. I was a guess. It was a pretty good guess, don't you think, bud? Okay, it was a pretty good guess. What else do you want to know? I just want to know the truth, man. That's it. Brian, I think, look. You think I know something look, about it? Look. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to help you understand. Right. The way things are, are maybe refocusing, okay? All right. I mean, you don't need these big changes in your life. We're talking about potential life in prison here, okay? Let me explain something. This is the problem. Okay? You're smarter than that. I can see it. It's written on you. Mm -hmm. Okay? The only people in the problem are the suspect and the three victims. Okay? Everybody else outside is a witness. Okay? All right. Until they do one thing. They start lying. When somebody lies, they automatically step into the problem. And that's called PC-32. Accessory after the fact. Okay? Now, if you want to step into this circle, which has a potential life penalty without the possibility of parole, okay, or 25 to life, does Arkansas have the death penalty? Um, I don't either. Okay, I know California does. Okay. If I want you to evaluate the big circle here, mm -hmm. okay, and and really, really think about it, okay. I don't think it's worth it, personally. Of course, it's not. Okay, and and so there's there's some potential problems, okay. Your story is almost carbon copy, okay. That tells me something. In all my years of interviewing people and a lot of crooks, a lot of them, okay, tells me you discussed it, okay. You, you talked about it before you talked about it with us. 
It's evident. I mean, it's almost word for word. Okay? It doesn't work like that in real life. Okay? And you know it, and I know it. Okay? There's a lot of inconsistencies in your stories, in both of you, even though uh, you know, you're, you're trying to make them just right. Okay? There, there are some problems with them. Rick, what? Well, if I tell you that, then you'd know, wouldn't you? Of course, and then I could clarify it. Well, you ever heard the old saying, okay, if you give a man enough rope, what do right, they end right. up doing? Right, they hang themselves. Right, because what webs we weave, okay? We weave webs because we don't tell the truth. Okay? Now, granted, this is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your entire life. Okay? I understand that, and you understand that. Chris, I mean, Brian, it, there's no doubt in my mind inside of you is somebody that, that is different than what's being on the exterior right here. And there's more inside of you than what you're, than what you're displaying. It's got to be eating you. It has to be. What? Whatever the problem is. There is no problem other than the fact that I'm here, I'm hungry, this is ridiculous. Okay, well, there's more to it when you sit on the machine, okay, and you come up almost carbon copy okay, to the exact same questions as the other guy, okay? And we've just put some pressure on that young man in that room, okay? And you start talking life in prison and the rest of your life, and you can take friends and all this other stuff and just put it off to the wayside. Okay? That isn't guaranteed. Okay? Now there's more to this, and I know you know it. And I'm trying to give you an opportunity to be honest and truthful about this situation, uh, Brian. Alright? Now, it's to your benefit. You, you follow me mm -hmm. with that? And, and, and I would really like for you to have that uh, part of your life. Alright? I mean, just be honest with me. I mean, I, I know there's more here. I know there is. How? Well, how do you think I know? No clue. Give me a guess. Come on, you're smarter than that. Because you you're trying to find out what happened. Brian, you're a very intelligent person. Am I right or wrong? Right. Okay. And I'm treating you with respect. I'm right. Okay. And that's why I think maybe... You're trying to think so hard okay, about the problem okay, and about the situation that you're not you're forgetting to do one thing. Okay? You're forgetting just to let it happen naturally. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And and you're fighting with yourself. I'm not fighting with anything. Okay. Well, it appears you are internally. No, there is okay. nothing to fight with myself about. Okay. I live in Memphis. I do things in Memphis. Okay. I on the very rare occasion go to West Memphis my trips to West Memphis and back to Memphis are accountable with Chris's parents okay my day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. from four days after I got back from Phoenix mm -hmm. are accounted okay all right I have umpteen billion alibis to where I was when I was on whatever day mm -hmm. you know I don't remember days specifically the fourth the fifth the third whatever day. I don't remember what I do day to day. Mm -hmm. All right. I was with somebody mm -hmm. constantly. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to call Wendy and verify where I was on whatever day, you can go ahead and ask her. That's already being done. Great. I mean, they're already doing all that back there. While we're here, see, this is a this is a 24-hour operation. Great. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. But that can also go to your detriment. Okay. I'm in the interview. Oh, okay. Some people out here. Okay, well, they have to wait. That can also go to your detriment. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Because we can get the facts before they come out of your mouth. Okay. Okay, and what ends up happening a lot of times is somebody says something and they forget the fact that we're in modern technology, okay, that we have a fax machine, telephones, 24 hour operations, police departments, FBI. We can do whatever we want. Okay, and get the information instantaneously. All we have oh, to do is find the people. Get it. Now, well, wait a minute. We can get it. Okay, and we have got it on some things. There are other things that don't jive. Like what? Well, I'm not going to tell you that because that's to my advantage, not yours. Okay? If, it, if you know what, the, what those things are, then you can fix it. You're right. Okay? But I'm not here to manipulate the lie. 
I'm here to tell the truth. You follow me? Yeah. And, and that's to your advantage. Everybody should tell the truth. But if you don't want to, then what you end up doing is stepping into the problem. Okay? And you make some huge decisions predicated upon your loyalty to friends or whatever the situation is. Okay? There comes a time in your life, man, when you have to look at the rest of your life. And you have to make a choice. Okay? Is that guy going to be here for the rest of your life? I don't think so. All right? Are you going to go to prison for him, for whoever else, or anything like that? Do you want to do that? No, because I am not involved in anything okay. until y'all called, or you showed up today okay. and started questioning me. Okay. I have nothing to do with this, nor does Chris. Okay, well, I differ with you there. Okay, that's your right. Well, it's the proof. It's the evidence. It's the evidence coming. Okay? You see... Crime scenes leave specific pieces of okay. evidence, Brian. Was there a witness to this crime? Brian, I'm not going to tell you that. That's specifics about the evidence. Okay. Okay. But look. Okay. Well, do they have a description of anybody in that area at that time? Why would you ask me a question like that? Well, Were you I in that area at that no, time? No, I wasn't. Okay, then why are you asking Because me? I want to know if there's something saying, I look like that person, mm -hmm. or somebody says, yeah, that was Brian Hall in there. Mm -hmm. Or what else? or anything related to me mm -hmm. because I wasn't mm -hmm. okay maybe you weren't but I think you know who was <sighs> whatever I don't know who did it I have no clue of who did it Joe Blow off the street did it male female whoever mm -hmm. look at yourself I'm pissed off no I don't yeah know. no not in totality <sighs> you're scared no I'm not scared you're There's not? nothing for me to be scared of. Not at all. No. Now, if I go to jail, I will be severely pissed off. I won't be scared. Mm -hmm. I'll be scared of the big guy that wants me fuck, wants to fuck me up the ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be scared of that. Okay. But no, I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm not nervous. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared. I'm pissed off. Okay. So, can you explain the polygraph test? No, I don't know how they work. Other than that, they measure blood pressure. I swallowed a bunch. I tried to clear my throat. Um, I had twitches. You went off the there. chart, man. I was sitting there, and I went twitch, twitch. I had no clue. It's amazing that Chris said the exact same thing. Well, amazingly, you guys, said you have your story. Me down. and Chris lived together. We've lived together for the past three months. I've known him for the past four or five years. You know, my day-to-day -day life goes along with Chris. You know what we're talking about here? We're talking about human life. Okay? We're talking about the ultimate sin. Alright? You, you don't have to justify, justify it with me. That's fine. Okay? Uh, I understand. Okay? You have to live with yourself, Brian. In totality. Okay? And let me tell you, my experience, it's like a cancer. It eats at you. I realize that. Yeah, it doesn't eat at you. It grows, and it grows, and it grows. And eventually, it consumes you. And you have one choice. And you can seek somebody out and talk to them, or it eventually takes over, and you do it again. Or, or maybe somebody else that you know does it again. I don't necessarily believe that you are perhaps the guy that, uh, that did it. Okay? I believe you might know something more. That's what I believe. I don't. Okay? What more can I tell you? Obviously not much more, if you can't. Okay? You, and I don't want you making up things, but let me tell you. Okay? In my experience, in life, as an investigator, just everything, you have more inside of you than you're giving up. No, I don't. Well, you, you know you, what? You're, all right, you've known me for was it nine thirty? Eight hours. That is not enough time to know someone, to be able to say I have more inside me. I don't. I haven't the slightest idea what happened in West Memphis. Whenever it happened, I don't even know the day it happened. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know what time. I don't even know the specific place. I know it's a ditch. Mm -hmm. They found him in a ditch. How do you know that? That was in the newspaper, or on the news. I heard that on the news. Mm -hmm. And who told you they were tied? I don't know. It's not in the papers, man. You know I how I know no. that? No. Word of mouth. mouth. No, no, no. No word of mouth. Those are specifics that only somebody who was been there and saw it would know. Okay, look at me. Okay? That is information that is not public. I talked to the investigator handling the case. It's not public. Then... Then what? Then put, you... Then I, put then me you, under a hypnotist then you, and ask me all your questions. Oh, isn't that amazing? The Chris, Chris said the same, the exact thing. same thing. I realized that. Then and what are you guys? You got your story so pat? You know what's going to happen? You're building yourself a little package. Keep going. You're building yourself a little package. And this is something I think you understand. It's just not going to go away. It's not going to evaporate. It won't. And the old saying, you can run, but you can't hide. You run. Run as far as you want. There's nothing to run from. Right. If you're telling the truth. That's what I'm doing. Then why'd you fail? I have no idea. Or, or not necessarily fail. What, not why didn't I pass fail? the three questions? Four questions. Four, okay, four questions. Right. Why didn't you? I have no idea. Could you be deceiving us? No. Okay, would one of the questions have been um, the one about uh, in the first 16 years of my life, did I ever hurt someone on purpose? Because if that was one of the questions, then yeah, I could have hurt someone because I got in fights when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I hurt someone on purpose. I purposely hit them and hurt them. Okay. Okay. If that's one of the questions and I didn't pass that question, um, I have a justification on that one because when we went over the questions first, mm -hmm. he asked me that question and I said, well, what do you mean by hurt somebody? He said, did you like put them in the hospital? I said, okay, well, no, I never put anybody in the hospital. But yeah, I got in fights when I was younger and I purposely hurt them. He goes, well, that wouldn't count. So I said, do I answer the question? No. Right. Okay, that's not one of the questions that okay. we have to be concerned with. Okay. Um, one of the questions was, will you be truthful with us? And you said yes. And your chart went pew, 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 pew. With first indicator, he's lying. Okay? He's lying. And you can lie all you want. I got the proof now. I have the piece of paper and the machinery and an expert who has testified in thousands of cases Fine. who can say, this is the reason this occurs. Okay? Loose lips okay, tell lies. The eyes never lie. Okay? Then why do I have my eyes shut I don't know. when I'm questioned? Because of the fact that you're concentrating on what you should be answering, and that's part of the part of the test. All right. The biggest problem here is, and I, and I can't figure you out yet. Okay. I think Chris has more to lose than you, big time. Personal opinion. All right. But I can't figure out your loyalty to him as of yet. Okay? Maybe you weren't there. Okay? But I think you heard something. And that little piece of the puzzle, you're afraid to give up. Okay? I, you know, that's what I sense. And if that's the case, Brian, that's not against the law. Okay? Where it becomes against the law is when you conceal it and hide it mm -hmm. in an investigation. You are a witness at that point. If you sit here and tell me, Detective McDonough, look, I wasn't there. Okay, I you know I didn't do whatever was done, okay, but this is what I know. Okay, Brian, tell me about it. You know what? You're gonna walk out that door. You're gonna hit it harder and faster than you've ever hit it in your life. That's a guarantee. And and I don't lie. If I lie to you, I would expect you never, ever to ever believe an attorney, a police officer, your mom, your dad, Mr. Ice Cream Man, whoever, okay? I'm not lying to you like that. 
You, know, you follow me? Okay. Well, see, here's the problem then. I can tell you what I know, which I've already done, and I'm sure not going out that door right now, am I? Sure you are. Then let me go. Do you want to leave? I want to eat. Okay. But, you know, I'm still going to have people question me about it. When I get back to Memphis, I'm going to have the same big old hassle when I get back to Memphis. Yep. I'm going to have to tell them the same thing I told you. Yep. And sure enough, my story's not going to differ because that's all I know. You better hope so. <sighs> For your sake. Yeah. From this point. Okay, no, no, no. Right, I understand that. I understand that, that, that if I tell you one story and you've got it written down and you send it to them or tell them or what, whatever so that they know my story that I've told you and then I go back and they question me again and something comes up different, mm -hmm. sure enough, I'm going to look guilty. Mm -hmm. And it's the subtle things, okay? I, I realize that. The big that. lies everybody remembers. I realize that. The best liars in the world remember the big lies, okay? But there's, there's an old saying, okay? We... We have learned by sad experience that it's the nature and disposition of almost all men, as soon as they get a little authority, okay, they will immediately okay, begin to exercise unrighteous dominion upon other people. Okay? And, and the, the, the sh tongue is as sharp as a two-edged sword, brother. Okay? And, and, and that is a truth. Okay? Because you can lie all you want. Okay? But the only person you're lying to is the self-master, yourself. Okay? Because it's the small, little itty-bitty ones that create no man falling on top of the mountain. Okay? No man just fell there. How do you get to the top of a mountain? Climb it. Remember we talked about that? All right. Okay. And every one of those little lies, okay, just, you know, here's the mountain, brother. Okay. And up on top of this mountain, you'd be surprised how many murderers I've shown this to, by the way, is this problem. Okay. Is the problem. And every time a person lies, and I'm not saying you are, I think you might be in some things. Like what? Well, what you... Sure, I'll tell you all the specifics, right, so you can fix it. That would be real good for you, huh? No, I'll let, I'll let you hang yourself. Okay. That's, that's your off... No, what, no, wait a minute. Don't get upset with me. Okay, I mean, I'm talking to you man to man. Okay, I mean, respect me for that, and I respect you for what you're saying, okay? I mean, you can understand that. Right. right. Okay. When people, they just take those little bitsy steps, okay? I mean, everybody knows this one. The big, huge jump, okay? The big storyline, okay? The big, I caught a fish this big, okay? Well, how long did it take you to reel it in? How long did it take me, Fred? Oh, let's tell them six hours, okay? You know how I know you're a good BSer? Honestly? Okay. I'm a good BSer. Okay? And what does it take for a good BSer to recognize? You have to be a good BSer to recognize a better one. You have to be. Okay? You can talk to people, and I bet you have this talent. You can talk to somebody and go, yeah, right. Am I right or wrong? Sure. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do it, but not anybody can do it immediately. You have to work on it. Okay? Or you have to have a talent for it. I think you have that talent. Because you're very good at probably smoothing women, are you? I don't try to. I don't. If you try to? I really don't know. When you go I after don't... a woman, do you get her? I don't go after them. Well, what do you go after then? You're not gay. Mm. Okay, then... I don't, I don't try. If I try to get a girlfriend, mm -hmm. if I try to go home with somebody... Right. I can't do it because I can't walk up to some girl and just start talking. Okay, but when you get comfortable with a girl. Yeah, I can talk, sort of. Well, I think you're pretty good at it, personally. Well, call my girlfriend and ask her. Wendy? Yeah, she'll tell you I suck at it. <laughs> no, you, you suck at communication in relationship to relations, okay? You don't suck at communication in relationship to human endeavors. There's a difference. What I mean by that and I'm sure you understand what I mean by that, is you could strike up a conversation with some dude and say, here, you want a beer? Sure. What are you smoking? I don't know, some joint? Sure, let's smoke. You want to smoke a doobie? Sure. Let's have a doob. Hey, you got any hits of LSD? Sure. You want to do a hit? Yeah, let's do a hit together. Wow, check all these trails out. You can do that, and that comes naturally. But a woman walks up, you have to work on it, because that's a relationship. But communication? Piece of cake. 
Put you in the right atmosphere, put you in the right mood, put you in the right environment, you could probably sell snowballs to an Eskimo. And he told Chris the same thing. You're right. And he told you, see, you're good at communication. He's my best friend. And he has told you everything he wants you to hear. And now you've got to reevaluate how far you want that best friend relationship to go. You got to think about it, Brian. You're th you are smarter than that. I give that to you. And I mean this with all my heart, man. This is not something to not be totally focused on. Okay? And and I ask I ask Chris one question. Would you go to prison for your friends? Let me ask you that. Would you? It would depend on the situation. What kind of situation, Brian? I don't know. I would have to be put in that situation. Could you possibly be thinking at this point you could be in that situation? No, because I didn't do anything wrong. I understand that. I'm saying to you, could you go to prison for your friends? You didn't say you did anything. I didn't say you did anything wrong. Could you go to prison for your friends? Listen to the question. Yeah, I probably could. Okay. That's a sacrifice you'd take, huh? Probably so. Like I said, it would depend on the situation. In this, I think this is all bullshit. Okay. And three eight-year-old boys is bullshit no, to you. No, huh? no, no. That's not. What is the that? fact that this is that? No, you gotta no, figure no, that out. No, 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 no. Okay. Me being questioned for this, mm -hmm. me being a suspect in this, me having to go to that stupid hospital mm -hmm. is bullshit. Well, you did that because you want to clear yourself. Right. Am I right or wrong? Right. And it's not Nobody working. Nobody told you you had to do and that. And it's not working. No. Well, no, I would have been arrested. No, you wouldn't. No. So I, could, I told you you were under arrest. Did I tell you were under arrest? Right. You, you, said, well, you at no time have ever been under arrest. I realize that. Okay. But if I said, screw you, I'm not going to the station, I'm not going to the hospital. And what would I have done, You Brian? could have arrested no, me and made me do it anyway. Brian, what would I have done? Come on, brother. See, you're reading into it. Honestly. You're trying to read. You, read, you watch too many movies. Okay? You watch too many movies. I, I don't do business like that. I try to get people to cooperate. That's the right way right, to do it. Right, and I did it. And you have done it. And now, and now we are at a, maybe we're just at another another level on the step here that we need to either go up or down. Okay, one way or another, we need to explain those four questions that you screwed up on and that he screwed up on. Well, how can I explain them when I don't know what they are? Well, if I told them to you, then would you be able to explain them? Possibly. I probably couldn't explain to you why that lie detector test just went haywire on them three times. Remember you were asked the question? I was asked four times. Four times then. That's all, even better. Did all four of them go crazy every one of them? In the same questions. Well, now, you figure the odds out. I have no idea. I know. Because I've been in this business long enough to know. Okay. You can't change it. You can you can control the exterior of yourself. I realize that. And I can't control the inside. I can't control my blood you can't pressure. Can't control, control your mind at all times. Okay, because your mind is telling you one thing and your heart's telling you another. That's your conscience speaking. Okay, and that's the cancer I was talking about. And you have a conscience. I know you do. Yeah, I do. You're not void of. And I couldn't kill somebody and live with it you and sit what? here and lie to you saying I didn't do it. Okay. I couldn't sit here and say I don't know anything about it okay, well, maybe, if I don't. Then let me let me get back to maybe you don't know anything about the killing. Okay? Maybe I don't you know, know anything something about, the about person. who might have. No, I don't. Well that would I explain don't. the questions to me. Okay? That would explain the questions in my mind. I would honestly look at you and say, I think he's telling the truth about this, this and this. Okay. And now it makes sense because of A, B, C, and D. Okay. It may it would make sense in my mind. But it, but right now it doesn't make sense. I have a big I have a big void here. Okay. I have a black hole. Okay. Because we've got to this point been totally a okay. All of a sudden, bam! Somebody blows a hole in the atmosphere. 
Okay? And coincidentally, it happens to be the same atmosphere that was blown in that room. Okay? Call it coincidence. Whatever. Okay? Coupled with the fact that your stories are almost identical, word for word, but you're off on some things. Okay? That you guys haven't figured out yet. Okay? Coincidentally, right? You leave you leave together from Memphis. To come out to California, you say one thing, he says another. And you guys have been talking, but apparently you haven't been talking well enough. Because you told us two different things. Now your challenge is to think about what you said. And ask him, what did he say? So when you come in again, or the cops come to talk to you again, you lie. That's just another nail in your coffin. You have to understand that. That's just another step on the ring. See, part of this part of this process is tremendous patience. If you're going to, as a homicide investigator, I don't expect you to jump to the top of the mountain. No. I expect you to get there one step at a time. And those are your steps. They're not mine. I get paid by the hour, Brian, to listen to you. Okay? But you, what it costs you is your time, and, and maybe the rest of your time, in the long run. You, you, you understand what I mean by that? And to me, personally, just knowing you in eight hours, okay, I don't think it's worth it for you. I really don't. Now, and that's where it comes down to a matter of priorities and loyalties. I don't know what you're loyal to, or what your priorities are. There's something there. I know you're loyal to something and somebody. And I don't I can't I cannot buy the fact that you would be willing to go to prison for somebody else. No. You're too much of a free spirit. You you, you like to roam. You're a cruising kind of guy. And you enjoy girls. And you enjoy being out at night. Okay? And and you are worried about Big Bubba coming over and asking you to pick up the soap. I don't see that happening. I, I sense that these are verbal communications, not necessarily heartfelt truths. Two different, two different things. Okay. I sense that about you. Am I right? Or, I mean, am I wrong? Am I reading you wrong? No. Okay. And I respect that about you. If your mother was sitting here right now, honestly, what would your mom tell you to do, Brian? Tell me, tell, tell you the truth. Completely, huh? Yeah. Totally. If your mom was sitting right there and we showed her the charts to the test and it came up deceptive, what would your mom think? She'd think your machine was fouled up. Okay. Completely? I wouldn't say completely. Okay. She'd probably say test him again. And what if it came up a second time? Who knows what she would say. Well, it came up four times. You were at, you know, that's what the guy did. He did test you again. Test you four times. And it came up exactly the same. Now, the only person being deceived here is yourself. And that's not right for you. I sense you have more self-respect and dignity than that. I really do. I mean, do you feel that in your life? What do you mean? Do you, do you feel that 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 perhaps you do have that self-respect about yourself? Yeah, I do. Okay. You know, the, the greatest thing you could ever give this family of these three kids, the greatest gift you could ever give them, what would that be? The truth. You got it. And why? Because they deserve it. That's right. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I've got one brother. And we talked about it, didn't we? And how would you feel? I'd feel shitty if my brother got killed. Mm -hmm. Would you feel that bad if if the cops were asking some guys that, that didn't come out just right? Okay. It's my obligation to make you squeaky clean, man. 
Okay? I want you Mr. Clean. So when you walk out of this office or this building, Detective McDonough can call Memphis and say, you get the wrong guys, boys. Okay? You better keep looking. Okay? But right now, I'm not in that position. I would be lying to call them and say, you got the wrong guys. Because you know what they would say? Hmm. Hmm? Why, what do you mean? And I'd lay it all out for them. So you figure it out. And it doesn't take a brain surgeon to be a cop. It doesn't. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take a brain surgeon to sit in that chair. Okay? Believe this or not, I've been on that side of the table. I'm not going to tell you when or where, but I've been over there. And I understand. And I've talked to a lot of people in your position. You're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard spot. And, I, and I, I empathize with that, and I see that. And it becomes a question of priorities and loyalties. Who are you going to be loyal to? Yourself? And your life? We're talking life here. Okay? Or, or to some, uh, something they call friendship, or whatever. Okay? Because let me tell you, the heat will just be turned up. Okay? It just gets hotter and hotter. Okay? Coupled with the fact of the, the cancer, okay? maybe the FBI, because potentially, right, we're now dealing in California and Memphis. Well, who's the law enforcement agency that sees both ends? FBI. FBI. Okay? And the heat just gets hotter and hotter. Until when? Until you and him come out squeaky clean. Okay? And the only way that's going to happen, Brian, is if the truth comes out in totality. Okay? That's the only way. And you know it, and I know it. And that's where it comes down. I mean, it, it, you got to get away from this, you know, this feeling or this loyalty to, to this sense of bond. Okay? That bond can only go so far, man. Okay? You don't want to be plastered on CNN. Okay? You don't want to be plastered on America's Most Wanted. You, you, you don't want your mom sitting at home going, Oh my gosh, you know, that's my son. What are they doing? Why are they questioning him? Okay? What's going on? Do you, you don't want that. I know you don't. You are smarter than that. Now him... I hate to say this, he don't care. Okay. He might facade. He might he might externally, internally, he's confused. Got a lot of problems. A lot of problems, and you know it. You're his best friend. You deal with his problems. I'll put money on it. You're the strongest out of both of them, out of both of you. And I bet you he talks to you more about problems than you talk to him. Am I right? Pretty much back and forth. Yeah. But that's friendship. But I'm talking about who talks to who the most. And I'm not trying... Don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to disrespect your friendship. Okay? I'm, I mean, that's valuable. Okay? I mean, that's a very important part of life. Okay? And that's very important. Okay? But doggone it, Brian, we all make mistakes. Okay? And, and I can't be held accountable for somebody else's mistakes. And you shouldn't either. This baggage should not be on your plane. You follow me? And the baggage is on your plane because he wanted to come out with you. Okay? I mean, that's how it happened. I really believe you set this thing up to come out here. But then all of a sudden he came along and he went, you know, I mean, you obviously maybe communicated because you live together, okay? But all of a sudden he's he's in your car and you're on your way out here, okay? Something's wrong here. There is something wrong here. I can't put my finger on it yet. I, you know, and I'm being honest with you. I'd be lying to you if I told you differently. But there's something wrong here. 
And you know it. I, I know you do, Brian. I know it. And you know I do. Okay. <laughs> Listen to that. Okay. That's him out on the porch. He's having a smoke. Okay. And Chris is paranoid right now. His parents are calling us. His sister's calling us. His brother-in-law is calling us. For what? What is They're it? concerned. They're concerned about what? You think we're going to put a railroad package on him? Uh, they think you're going to put him in jail. For what? For something he didn't do. Well, maybe something he knows that's occurred. You ever think of that? You don't necessarily have to do it. But if you know about it, and you don't tell about it, you become part of it. It's like a liquor store robbery. I pick up two friends and say, hey, Fred, Bobo, yeah, drive me over to this, I mean, I'm going to drive over to the 7-Eleven and commit a robbery. No, don't do that, man. What, are you crazy? No. Well, we're getting out. Okay, get out. And they get out. Bobo goes over, commits a liquor store robbery, and goes, boom, blows the clerk's head off and comes back and says, hey, I blew the clerk's head off, man. I didn't mean to do it, but I did it. Oh, man, what did you do that for? Hey, I just did it. All right, well, don't say anything. All right, man, we won't. All right. Cops show up. Hey, hey, Bobo, hey, whatever, come here. Let's talk about this liquor store robbery. I understand you might know something. Hey, we don't know anything. No, no way, buddy. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Red flags, you know, polygraphs. What? I failed? What the hell's wrong with this machine? Give me a break, bud. Right? Cops dissipate, which we always do, because it's a game of patience. Okay? But they don't go away. Okay? Comes back a week later. Hey, Bobo. Remember that uh, problem we had a while back? Yeah. We'll talk to you again. Okay. Oh, and by the way, your friend's in custody over here. Yeah, and he told us that he told you. And that you knew about it. Well, guess what? You have officially graduated into the PC32 club. Okay? Accessory after the fact. You become liable now for the death of that clerk because you knew information about it and you concealed, aided, and abetted a fleeing felon. Okay? Congratulations. You now get an opportunity to serve 25 to life in prison for free and all it cost you was a breath of air when the cops were asking you for that air simple and now you think in a triple homicide three boys headline news involving perhaps <clears throat> the president of the United States his state okay you don't think the feds are going to be on this thing in a little while you haven't seen heat yet. You think his family's got a problem now? Just wait. That's when the heat will be turned up. And that's when you guys will be wishing that this was an opportunity to talk about it. You'd be you're gonna be you're gonna be wishing for Detective McDonough, okay, and Detective Bradshaw one day. And and you know nine out of ten times when these things really click in? at somebody your age, is when they're sitting in that cell and the doors go BAM! Okay? And then you go, and this is the proverbial grab my head, okay, and kiss it goodnight look. Okay? You know how many times I've seen that in all my years? A lot. Did, did you explain an accessory after the fact? Uh, I, was just going I was just going over that with him. Um, you know, real quick, I mean, Chris is kind of getting a little impatient. Oh, the other Chris. Okay. Accessory after the fact, okay, basically, he knows some information about a crime. Let's take it a totally separate crime. Let's say, maybe, let's bring it down to a minor level, like a burglary. You know something about it. Okay. Maybe you were there in the peripheral. You didn't really partake about it. 
participate in it. You're talked to. You conceal the identity of everybody there. Say, I wasn't there. Later on, it gets proven. He's good. He says, yeah, you were there. You've lied. You didn't participate in it. Now you're an accessory. Now you, you might as well have committed the burglary because you're going to get the same sentence. Okay? That's accessory after the fact. Okay? Things to keep in mind. You know, I sit here and, and I've been doing this a lot longer than him. Hell of a lot longer. May not look as old as him, but I've been doing it a lot longer. Okay? I mean, I'm starting to push 17 years in this in this job. I don't think you did it. I really don't. My mind, I don't think you did. I think you have information about who might have. Okay? So now it's you got you're torn. You're literally torn. You know what you're torn between? You're torn between this grisly sight of three eight-year-old kids, which is almost an unheard of in any state. I mean, it happens out here probably more often than any place else. The state goes ballistic because it's unheard of. I mean, these are little kids. They've got their full life in front of them, and it's ended. Okay? But then you're torn. That You don't like that. But on the other hand, maybe you've got a friend or somebody you know that's involved or has information or has done something and close to it. That, oh, you've got that friendship. So now you're being torn apart. Literally, tearing you apart. Okay? Which one are you loyal to? The eight-year-old thing is sickening. But then you have friendship. Here's your part. Okay, and I see it time and time again. Right now it's nothing, because it's so close. Five years down the road, you won't be able to handle it. Because it's never going to go away. You know, and I think the most gratifying thing that we see out of this job on something like this, because we talk to victims that have lost people violently, Lost real close ones violently. And it's not convicting the people, sending them away, or anything. They can't close that chapter in their life until it's over with. That means the court process, everything, it's over with. Then they can finally let them go. Let them go where they belong. Okay, but until that point, Parents aren't going to rest in peace. Okay, I mean, it's just, they can't let it go. I mean, it comes down to it. I mean, if you were a father and you had an eight-year-old, like I do, and something hit, happened to you like that, I mean, it's devastating. I mean, we've seen it. It's devastating. It's devastating to us. It's devastating to us to have to go and try to pump life back into somebody else that maybe they've been run over by a car. To try to pump the life back into them again and then fail. That's devastating. Okay, don't let it eat you away. Don't let it. You know, I don't think you're involved. I think you have information. If you know, we got to do these families right for these kids. I mean, so they can get on with their life. In other words, they're going to live with it till it finally comes to an end. Okay, so now you've got to get all the people to be in hurt. You can't, you rule out the kids because they're not around. But how about if they have brothers or sisters? Mom and dad all the other relatives you because right now right now you're strong it may not be bothering you but it keeps eating away and eating away then you start losing sleep and then your stomach starts going getting all screwed up 
Okay, and then finally, and we've seen it, you tell somebody, and you get this look on your face like, God, I'm glad it's out. I, mean, I just went through it. And you just feel like, I'm glad it's out. Because now I don't have to sit there and just try to hold it in and keep tense all the time, wondering, waiting, looking over my shoulder. It's over and done with. And then you can look at yourself in the mirror saying, I did the right thing. Because if you really look at it, if you really look at it objectively, that's deplorable what happened to these kids to you. It's deplorable. Okay? And whatever happened, we weren't there. Maybe there was reason behind it. You know, there's usually some reason behind everything why it's done. Okay, maybe the kids got started making fun of people. Who knows? And the people just lost it. I don't know. I'm not going to sit there and condemn anybody. But to have something that, like that done to an eight-year-old. If you got your friendship on this side, well, what kind of friends are they if they do things to, like this to little kids? You know? kind of hard to understand. You know, in 17 years, I think I'd probably go 25 or 30. You'll never understand why some of them are really done. Never will. See, you're in a position now, and I really think you're in a position to provide some useful information. I really think you are. And I wouldn't be here telling you that unless I thought it was. I mean, we talked going down when you took the test. You've got goals, what you want to do. School, you know, come out here, go to school. I mean, you've got goals. You've got, you, you've got an idea of what you want to do. You know, Chris talked about riding motorcycles at 90, 100 miles an hour, you know, and how easy they are to get away from the cops. And that if they get caught, just say you're crazy and you can get off. Okay, I mean, two different people here. I mean, one person's going out here and while you're going down the straight line, you're focused in on what you want to do. But you need to weigh those two things. Think of it if, if one of those were your kids. You'd probably want us pushing here. And believe it or not, we've been here since 7.30 this morning. You'd probably want us pushing just as hard as we are right now, wouldn't you? If it was your 8-year-old. And you'd be saying, God, please, hope somebody comes forward with some information that will help them find who did it. You know, and, you know, most victims say, I don't hate the person. Do you know that? Most victims say, I don't hate the person who did it. They just want to be able to get it out of their lives so they can get on with theirs. And they feel that void until they can do it. I mean, they can't let it go until it's over, it's done with, trial and everything. I mean, think of it. Okay, 17 years. Right here. Right here. I'll bet you on it. You didn't do it. But you have an idea who did. Because there's no clue. Because of information floating around. Honest to God. Let, let me ask. Or whatever. I have no well, earthly there's, idea. There's, there's too much floating around of information hasn't gone public. That I know about. I realize that he's told me that. Yeah. About them being bound, about them being castrated. Right? I didn't tell you that. About the 
Okay, well, about them being see? bound. See? You're I'm right sorry. there. I'm sorry I didn't pay attention that close. No, you don't have to pay attention, Brian. Okay? But that's what we're saying. That's what we're saying to you. You're telling us things that, and in, in Owen's experience, he's telling you straight up, okay? This man has interviewed thousands of people. Okay, I only got 11 years in this job. Okay, and he has seen a lot more people than me. And he has the same observations of you that, that I was explaining to you. Okay? I, I told you up front, we, I don't think you did it either. Okay. Okay? But there's too much pertinent information that only the killer, okay, or somebody that knew the killer would know. Okay? And you have it. Now, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure it out, man. Yeah? Okay? You had to get it from a direct source. Okay. My friend Bobby, all right, he knew Stevie. I don't know the little kid's last name. I know he's a little blonde haired boy. Bobby, who's Bobby? Bobby who? Bobby D'Angelo. He's already been interviewed and questioned and everything. He lives in Memphis. All right. He was close to that family. I'm not sure if he was related to him or not. But more than likely, that's where I heard about them being bound, and that is where I heard them about him being the, the kids being castrated. All right. Now, if it's true, then it's true. If it's not, then he was just saying it. Who was just saying? Bobby. Okay. Other than that, I have no idea what was going on. Okay. I didn't know until it had already been in the news when I found out about it. How were they bound? I don't know. All I know is their feet and hands were tied. Okay. I don't know with what or, you know, anything like that. If it was behind their back, if it was together. Where that information What do you mean together? Like, like if they were tied like this. You know, if they were just tied here. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if they were tied like that or with what or if it was behind their back in front of them. Anything. All right. More than likely, Bobby's the one that told me about them being castrated, about them being tied. I really, honestly, don't know where I heard it. Okay. You know, that could have been from anybody who heard it from somebody else and just passed it along. Or it could have been like, all right, I tell you, I caught a 12, 12 pound catfish. Mm -hmm. All right. You tell him, hey, he caught a really big catfish. And then he goes and tells somebody else, hey, he caught a 15 pound catfish. The story compounds and it gets bigger and bigger. And finally, somewhere, I caught a fish this big and about that big around. It weighed 100 sure. pounds. But but we're dealing with three eight-year-old little boys. Right, right. Okay. I'm just I'm just making that analogy, analogy. That, that 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 the story can grow. Okay, you I know. understand. In, with a town like Memphis, people, everybody knows everybody. All right, in a well, town like West Memphis. Let me ask you something, because because yeah, I'm familiar with it, and West Memphis is small. Under that principle, it's kind of like the hometown where my folks are. It's small. Everybody's got a good idea of what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Who do you think did it? I don't know. Because Take I don't have... Take a guess. I, I mean, what kind, what kind of some, person? Some, some sick person who maybe didn't like kids, maybe has a psychological problem, you know, maybe has a sexual problem, because apparently they were sexually abused as well because they're taking sexual disease tests. Is, is this... This is my all, conclusion. Oh, uh, yeah, but is all this information coming from Bobby? What do you mean? I mean, all the information about what what went on with the kids. Um, I don't know if all of it came from him. I know the castration more than likely did. I'm probably 99% sure it did. Okay, does Bobby work? Yeah, he works at a car wash. Yeah. I mean, his family... I, I'm not sure. I can't... I never even found out if he was directly related to him. He may have been like a second cousin or something. But I know Bobby knew Stevie and like knew him well. It was like he said something about him being his little brother or something. I don't know. But I know it wasn't his brother. Um but I mean whoever did it could have been anybody. Couldn't have just been anybody. I mean there's uh you know, 
in every town there's certain people that you, know, you just know right that, that are that are looser and, right and cannibals. well i don't live in west memphis i don't hardly ever go there when i do it's to chris's parents house and that's it i what go there and i go back home okay one thing that concerns me is what has chris related to you and about this what do you mean what's he told you what has he told you about what y'all asked him no about but this thing with the eight-year-old everything i've told you well i mean me. he's not it's not been a me ask him what happened it's been more than more like well i heard this well i heard this well, did you know who they were no you know just a, a very plain description of what happened and what is that description? Just that they were tied up and castrated and beaten to death. Now the beating was on the news. That's what I heard on the TV when I saw the three kids with their names underneath and Stevie was on the left hand side, okay. I think. They said they were beat to death and found in a ditch. And I'm almost sure that it said something about them being tied up. I'm not, I'm not positive, but, but I, I I'm almost sure that's where I heard that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, whether that was public news or not, I don't know. Well, what has Chris, what else has Chris told you about this? That's it. I didn't say anything coming out here as you guys were driving out? Uh-uh. How about your two friends up in San Francisco? Do they know anything about it? Just what they've seen on the news. And that's, that's Beth? Yeah. And Jack? Or Rick? Dave, Rick? My wife. Beth and Rick. And do you happen to have their phone number or anything in your wallet? Mm -hmm. Do you know where they went? I have no idea. All I know is they went to the San Francisco area. Salinas? I don't know. Do you know their last name? I know Beth's last name. I don't know Rick's name. What's Beth's last name? Clevis. Clevis? Clevis, yeah. Can you spell it? C L E A V I S, probably. That's K typical spelling. It's, it's K, it starts with K. It's K L E. Okay, how old is she? Uh, 18. White female? Yeah. How old's Ray? I don't know about that one. How how tall is Beth? About that tall? A little bit shorter than me, 5'7. Okay, how much does she weigh? I don't know. 120. Color hair. Color mm -hmm. hair. Dark. Dark brown. Eyes. Where does she live? In Memphis. West Memphis? No, in Memphis. Where at? Uh, she's in between apartments right now. That's why she went on the strip. She was living with her father in Mississippi. What about Rick? White male? Yeah. You know his last name? Uh-uh. How old is he? Uh, I don't know. I think he's 19, 18, 19, maybe 20. Are they boyfriend and girlfriend? No, they're just friends. Color hair? Uh, shaved. Skinhead? Well, not, not skinhead, but there's like that much. It's like light color. I don't know. Where did you know Rick? We were doing a couple months ago, three months ago, something like that. Where? At uh, my girlfriend's house. At Wendy's house? Yeah. And you don't know his last name? Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know that, man. Uh, I do, but I don't know. I may, I, may, I may have heard it, but I don't know. I just never paid attention enough. You never registered it? Yeah. kind of car? A red one. Okay. Um, I don't know. I always thought it was like a Cavalier, but it's not a Cavalier. I'd have to show you. I mean, I, I, it's I a Chevy? I, I think so. But it's like, I don't know. I rode a Cavalier the other day, and, and that's not what it was. It was some little red four-seat, almost family car, but it's got a little bit of go to it. A Corsica? No, it's not a Corsica either. Um, celebrity? No. You want to talk to them for a minute while I go uh, use the phone? Okay, so are they out there? Who's that? Whoever? 
Can I wreck? So you don't know you don't know Rick's last name. Mm -mm. Whose idea was it to come out here? Um apparently you planned the trip about ten days or so at time. Alright, this is what happened with 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 the trips and everything. Okay. Like I would guess like two months ago, maybe two months and a week ago, me and Chris decided to go to Phoenix to see my mom and my little brother. Mm -hmm. Um I got off work, we left on a Wednesday night, like early early Friday or Thursday morning um, I was supposed to be off work Thursday and Friday and then be back on to work Monday um, we decided to stay the next week in Phoenix um, we left Phoenix and went to Albuquerque and met um, this girl in Albuquerque we stayed there for about a, we stayed there for five and a half days left there and went home got home on a Friday I don't know the date um, On the way home, me and Chris talked about just going back home, um, paying our rent again, and leaving again, coming out here. That's when the initial plans to leave Memphis again started. Okay. That was uh, approximately um, like a month and three weeks ago. You said pay your rent. You guys sharing a place yeah, or something? Yeah. With yeah. the apartment? Yeah. Where at? It's uh, in Memphis. You share it with anybody else? Yeah, we have three other people living there. Who are the others? Um, a guy named Richard, a guy named Frankie, a guy named David. And you know their last name? Nessler, David Nessler, Frankie Harris, and Richard Christopher. He's got it written down somewhere. Okay, I'll, like I said, I don't know what he's written down yeah. or anything. Um, but we, we, we talked about leaving again, and when we got back into Memphis, realized that our tires were bald on the back, so we waited around. Um, trying to get tires, trying to get some money so we can get tires put on the car so we can leave. Mm -hmm. um, in the month and a half that we were in Memphis, um, I stayed with my girlfriend uh, every night except for two, I think, and that was like, well, actually, I got back on Friday, she got back on Monday. I started spending the night over there that Monday, and like a week, a week after that, I, uh, I stayed at home one night, and then one Saturday night, she went to Nashville, and I stayed at home that night. But every other night, I, and almost all day, every day, we were together. Okay. Um, well, when this thing went down, you know, and keep in mind, I'm kind of out in the dark a little bit. When this thing went down back there, where were you? I mean, about the three kids. Yeah. Um. I mean, were you with a girlfriend or? Yeah, I, I would. I, I mean, I don't know what time of the day it happened. Do you? I mean, was it was it nighttime? Was it morning or afternoon you know, or something? You know, I I know a little more. I don't even know as much as Chris. I mean, I didn't come into this thing till I was driving Chris to the right. polygraph guy. Right. Um, uh, more than likely, I was with my girlfriend. I mean, it was almost a nonstop. We were together. Where was Chris? Um, you know, probably at the apartment. At, at so, our apartment. So we don't know. Um, I I'm not sure because I mean I really don't know what day. I mean. Chris kept asking me um, what I do on the 4th and the 5th, so I'm assuming it was one of those days that it happened. Chris kept asking you? That? Right, asked me what happened on the 4th, you know, what did I do on the 4th. But, I mean, specifically, I, I don't know. I mean, I can generalize and say, you know, I, I more than likely did this and this and this. And you say Chris, which Chris? This Chris? Chris? Okay. Um, I was going to say, why is Chris asking you? Right. I mean, I, I, I can't, I don't keep up with my days like that. Um, I don't even know today's date, but, okay. you know, um, more than likely I was with my girlfriend, okay. um, and have been with her until Monday, until this past Monday when I left town at about 4, you know, 5.30, I think. And you told me you were going to pick up a car and drive it back right, to Atlanta? Right, right. It's, it's a friend of mine's, um. He used to live out here, and he flew back, and, and his car is supposed to be fixed sometime this week. And then, like, next week, I suppose, it, they're supposed to drive back to Atlanta. Okay. And then you're going back to Memphis for Atlanta? Yeah. How are you going to get back to Memphis? Um, he'll probably drive us up there. He hasn't been up there. He knows a bunch of people up there, too. Okay. Um, he'll probably drive us back up there and, and spend a few days and then go back home. So, 
You don't really know who may have done it? No, I don't. Do you know if Chris was involved? No. You, I, I mean, I can say, and in my heart, in my head, I believe he didn't do it. I believe he doesn't know anything about it. Could he been under the influence and no. just wigged out? No. Under the influence? Mm -mm. How about any other friends? Any of my other friends? Or any of his other friends? Uh, we basically have the same friends, but no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, my group of friends, my group of close friends that I actually talk to all the time, um, we don't make a habit of going to Arkansas unless we absolutely have to or we're driving out of town. And um, one of my friends isn't allowed in Arkansas anymore. Um, he's got some charges against him that, and Arkansas said, don't come back or we'll arrest you. Um, but um, my other roommate, David, his parents live out in Germantown, which is mm -hmm. the opposite way. Yeah. Um, he never goes to Arkansas. I mean, that doesn't... That's like this friend of Stevie. Bobby? Like, yeah. Um, what kind of guy is Bobby? He's, he's really nice. He's, um, I don't want to say retarded, but he's slower, you know. Um, <laughs> but he, he's like, he's real compassionate. And, and real, real nice. How old is he? He's older than me. He's 21. I think, okay. and I think he's 21. Um, but, I mean, Bobby's the type of person that will stick up for you. Like, like if I said, Bobby, this guy's messing with me. You know, can you leave me alone? He would help me out. Um, it, but he's not one to go out and just intentionally just fight <laughs> or hurt somebody just just to be doing it. How about if the kid started making fun of him? No, he wouldn't. I mean, we make fun of him constantly. He does really, really stupid things constantly. And we'll I mean, start calling names, you know how kids can Yeah, yeah, like I mean, we do the same anymore. thing. I mean, I've known him long enough and everything that we do it. Mm -hmm. We just, I mean, it's just a given that we mess with Bobby, you know. Um, Anybody else? And he'll yell back, but he won't ever do anything. Anybody that hangs around Bobby? No, I mean, um, Bobby pretty much hangs around us. I mean, there's like, there's like a group of maybe ten people maximum. I mean, I, I doubt it's even that many people who are together. We hang out. So you didn't know the three kids? No, I mean, I I'd, I had seen Stevie. I had seen him. I, I kind of recall seeing him once, maybe a year or two ago. Um, but. I mean, to, to, to actually, if I had a picture of all three of the kids um, and say they were all blonde, I couldn't go, well, that's him. You know, but if okay. one was blonde, one was brown, and one was red, I could do it. Well, that one's him because he's blonde hair. I mean, I, I don't know his face. I can't get his face in my head. So how can we explain the deception angle on this test? I really don't know. I mean, I, I can't. I mean, I it comes out deception when you even ask the question or you tell the truth. I, I understand. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I'm lost on that one. Because I'm, you know, you got to ask the same questions. I think four times. Yeah. That, yeah. Each, I, I, I don't know. Each each question. I mean, we could almost put them up on top of each other and it'd be the same. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because when I was in there, I felt fine, you know, and I, 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 I swallowed after some of the questions. A dentist once told me I salivate a lot. And I was swallowing after some of the questions. Um, I had twitches, you know, I have problems sitting still when, when, um, I can't remember her name. The one that took me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. When she was taking pictures of my of my shoe, I couldn't hold my leg still. It was just like jerking everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I twitch. I mean, it's not like a, a, a real constant thing, you know, like all the time. But, uh, you know, that could have been it. Or I had, um, I just caught a cold and I was trying to get something out of my throat. I mean, that could have been it, you know. Mm -hmm.
Any of your friends have like a a Swiss pocket knife or anything? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I have a friend that has a, a red um, one or something like that. A red knife? Yeah. Uh -uh. I have a friend that has a butterfly knife, but it's lost. It's been lost for about two weeks, two yeah. and three weeks maybe. Who's that? Richard. But um, I, I haven't seen it in a while. I mean, it just it was here and there, and then it'd show up, and then it'd get lost, and it'd show up again. And, okay. But not not a Swiss Army knife. I don't think. I mean, I don't I don't recall seeing one with any of my friends. You know, hopefully, and and I mean this, that when you say I've been doing this for a while, where I'll just let it come out and tell you the truth. Hopefully, if you know something, you come forward with it. Right. Because I don't think you want to be spending some time in prison no, for, I don't. for withholding information. And that's exactly where you'll go. Yeah. And probably back there, you'll probably get a lot more out of it than you would out here in, in, in our liberal state. Um, you know, keep in mind what I've, I say about the parents have to live with this yeah. until it's caught. Yeah, I understand all that. But and, and it wouldn't halfway surprise me knowing that state that it's not going to be forgotten real quick. Yeah. I mean, I, I just... I can't, I mean, I can understand why I'm here and why I'm being questioned about it, sort of. I mean, I can understand more why Chris would be because his parents live right down the street. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, that starts to make sense. he disappeared right afterwards. Right, and then we left town. But on that same note, how many people left town on Monday? How many people left town the day after it happened? You know, see, I mean, are all those people going to be questioned? Well, that's up for them. Right. You know, the only reason we're here is you guys are in California. Right, yeah. But <laughs> I mean, we're in California. That just doesn't make any sense okay. to me why why we were hopefully, picked out of it. Hopefully, they're doing all the questioning and finding the other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, at their request, this is being done. Yeah. Okay, and, and it's, you got to keep in mind, you know, Things flow downhill, and it starts at the top. Mm -hmm. And us little peons catch it all. Okay. But another thing, I mean, I mean, I can sit here and tell you that that you know I don't I don't know who did it. You know, I don't have any. I've told you. I right. I believe it. All right. But Good. but I have no way to to make you fully convinced of that. I can't fully convince Chris about that. Well. You know, and and that's you that's can't what, fully convince Chris, and you know you don't know if you fully convince right. me. Right. But um, at some point, yeah, I believe it. And what I'm trying to say is, you know where you want to go. Don't let some relationship or friendship jeopardize that. All right, I, and I'm not I'm not letting that jeopardize it. Um, you know if. I mean, if you get back and you get back to Memphis or something, and you hear who did it, then I'd, yeah, I'd be I'll, picking I'll, up the phone, calling West Memphis PD. Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, I mean, if I knew something now, if I, if, if, if even Chris had said, "Man, I heard blah blah blah," knew who did it, then sure, I would say, you know, this person might know who did it, but, you know. I can't. I can't tell you that. I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not in my brain to come out. You know, like Chris said, my friend Chris, you know, you can hypnotize me. I mean, isn't that a surefire way to find out? I mean, no. can I, I mean, that that is like going into the subconscious. I mean, that's just, that's about, that. I would say that's as accurate as a lie detector test. That's not even as accurate. Really? Yeah. Um, let go see if Chris my Chris, <laughs> what he's got going on, and, you know, if he doesn't have anything, get you out of here. Okay? Let me go check with him. Did any food ever show up? Yeah, I thought they brought some food in, but I can't find it for you. And that's the truth. <laughs> I'm going to lock this door for the primary reason that is there's very few people in here right, right now.
Come on, Brian, let's get you out of here.